I that that was the that wasn't the one I was thinking about. Yeah. So the spellbreaker really coming into big effect in that game in particular. Um, and that was the deck I was worried about for Shoop. And it, now that that's tucked away, honestly, it's a major turnaround. Shoop has almost certainly got an advantage at this point. I mean, not only just because of the game one win, but just simply because the Reno Jackson isn't there for Chalky to continue to put pressure on with the rest of his builds. Yeah, all the rest of his decks are, are going to line up well against a lot of Chalky's decks. I'm um, looking at that Warrior in particular. I mean, Reno, Reno Warlock is another deck that lined up pretty decently against the Warrior, and that's out of the way, but... Still, Shoop definitely now has a huge advantage. That's a big win for him. And I, I feel like he, he sort of just snuck it in. I, I feel like Chalky sort of handed that one to him and said, you know what, have it, and Shoop did. And a bold call to Alex Strauss of the turn before, but he knew exactly what he was doing. He was setting up for that turn too lethal. Chalky didn't expect it and went with a line of play that definitely punished him. Yep. So now at this point, I mean, Chalky's going to continue to queue up at random. I'm... Just know that that's the philosophy he chooses to go with uh, when he's playing. He lo- wants to let the in-game decision-making in the deck builds dictate things, not how the, the lineups actually work out. And he, for I mean, he has chosen Cthune Druid in every single opening that he's had across the entire weekend. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just total coincidence. I'm just saying, yeah. I've practiced with Chalky a lot on this one, and when you try to when you try to analyze pick order in Conquest, it's it's like that's the infuriating part of the entire yeah. argument. He just goes, he goes, no, and he'll show you the math. <laughs> like he's, I'm a believer in this. If one person's randoming, it doesn't matter. It only matters if both players are trying to pick. That's it. If either player decides they want to pick at random, no choice here. Um, but Shoop, honestly, played very cleanly that game. You know, the only thing that I was a little bit worried about was that Fangel sticking around. I mean, even despite the Fangel nourish chalking at losing that game. Yeah. You know, it's when that happens, you've got to look at that game and go, what went wrong? Because it's not like he got ran up, run over in the beginning. It's not like he was an overwhelming pressure. He had an opportunity to kill Alex Strauss and didn't take it. Yeah. Instead, he went to push for, for the pure damage and try to end the game with that Cthune. All right. Well, we're going to move into game number two here. It's going to be Chalky with the Zoo Warlock, and Choop is going to throw out the Aggro Shaman. So Chalky does get a good matchup at this one, at least. But it's not the best. Now, with a good early hand and a good start, Agro Shaman can hold their own. But both players have an Argent Squire. Chalky has his one turn sooner. Yeah, not really too much of a benefit. I mean, if he's running main deck Mortal Coil, that's different. But you know, we've only seen the uh, the natural Mortal Coil from Terrence so far this weekend. And so, you know, Possessed Villagers, Argent Squire, Beast of Sergeant, those are some of the most important cards in this matchup for the Zoo deck. Well, I mean, we know what they are for Shaman. Uh, Arden Square, Tunnel Truck, Totem Golem is pretty much it. You know, the the one drops that are important for for Zoo are going to vary matchup to matchup. You know, in some matchups it's Flame Imp, in some matchups it's Void Walker. In this one in particular, it is Possessed Villager and Arden Squires. Mm-hmm. See what Shoot picks up. His eyes got a little big. He threw away the Lightning Bolt, but got it back. And a decent start for both players, but neither player has a significant advantage looking at these openings. Yeah, but- I think the Flame Wreath Faceless and the fact that Shoop has got very little minion action is probably going to make him a, a tad nervous this game. You know, Chucky's rolling into Dark Peddler. He's got Defender of Argus, which he can pretty safely roll into. And now he's got Knife Juggler picked up. So his turns are looking very strong. And Shoop going to kind of be relegated to answers here. Yeah. And that's, you know, the Shaman deck wants to put a minion on board, kill a minion. Put a minion on board and kill a minion. It's, it's very Tempo Mage-esque in its yeah. style of play. Um and when you don't have those early game options, you're, that's where the Flame Wreath Faces comes in. You're really relying on that card to kind of pick up the slack that you had missed mm-hmm. in that early game. Well, can't see the choices here. Again, uh, Discover Mechanic sort of has a bug. <sighs> Whoa. I'll tell you what, if Sheep Jaws Sir Finley, it's not going to be kind. I mean, the options have to be pretty poor for you to pick Hungry Crab of all things. All of them had to be situational, and Hungry Crab had to be the one that had the most likely likelihood of, of being activated. And, I, I mean, with one Murloc being in the deck, in the entire deck, and even that's just a chance. You're just going for the highlight reel. Is it sure. power overwhelming? No. Mortal Coil? No. Ooh, Hungry Crab. This will make Reddit. 
<laughs> Sheep gonna strand that flame tongue totem. And I can tell you, Chalky's definitely gonna pick that one up. Yep. Yep, Knife Juggler looking pretty clean here. And even if Sheep answers one of these, Defender of Argus is gonna hit two minions. And this is the kind of situation that the Shaman really is not looking for. Is facing this board pressure. I mean, that Feral Spirit, if he Feral Spirits here and does not use coin and, and a removal spell here, it, this is going to get run over. I, mean, I think Feral Spirits and a coin Rockbiter could be a decent play, but you don't have a play to follow that up with. You're, you're basically lightning bolting next turn. If you coin out Frame with Faceless, Again, you're all, you're on two mana next turn, but at least your two mana can be used for Rockbiter and Lightning Bolt. Yeah, and the problem with the Flame with Faceless here is that a power overwhelming could make the abusive Sergeant trade with the Flame with Faceless. Yeah, and so that those are the two things he's thinking about right now is can, which one of those is is less bad for me. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start with Lightning Bolt. We are gonna coin this Feral Spirit here, so it's gonna be only one mana available for. I'm sorry, there will be two mana available for Sheep next turn. And Defender Bar one mana. Oh yeah, it is one man. I'm sorry, because uh, the overload from Lightning Bolt, yeah. and it's it's not horrible here because the two twos left alone. But this yeah. Defender of Argus is probably going to be the play here. I mean, he does, does need to do something to put pressure on this. Although Life Tap and Double Possessed Villager is looking appealing as well. Yeah, if you're Chalky's position, you know that if this is the play, that Shoop has to have a one drop. And going back to Shoop's side, I really like the play of uh, using the the Lightning Bolt this turn as opposed to the Rockbiter, because you know that your uh, next turn, you're only going to play a one-mana spell. And this way, he has the option of playing Doomhammer on five, whereas otherwise, if he used the Rockbiter last turn and was forced to use the Lightning Bolt this turn, he would uh, eliminate Doomhammer as, an, as a, an option for turn five. So, um, you know, really great sequencing on his, on his one-mana spells. Two possessed villagers or Voidwalker villager? It's looking to me Voidwalker villager. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if Sheep draws Finley, it's not going to be kind to him. <laughs> it's that that was kind of like the turn where Finley could have been something. And so Chalky going to look to uh, use this defender of Argus, I imagine. Sheep not going to take the trade on the body. Type Possessed Villager. Type Possessed Villager, Defender of Argus. Yep. And now that's challenged, and Doomhammer are going to do a nice job of getting some work done here, but... Flame with oh. Faceless on turn 6 as well. This is a nice curve panning out for Shoop. It's a you fantastic know, fact, curve. Yeah, the fact that Chalky could not really take advantage of what was happening. And Shoop, I imagine, going to pick up the 1-1 one -one as well. I'm curious how Chalky is going to be able to answer not only the flame wreath face that's going to come out next turn but also just doom hammer i mean he's still pretty healthy he's got room to tap he can make a good trade this turn and dark peddler uh power Woman will give him options uh, as far as you know trying to find a way to deal with frame flame wreath faceless but and mortal coil yeah, really digging here just gonna go with uh, the uh, hunger crab at this point dream is dead yeah well not for shoop Oh, man. I, I think that Shoop is still possibly on cleanup duty here for a bit, though. I mean, he cannot allow a very clean trade in that Flame Wreath Faceless. That's the nightmare. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you're fine here just playing the Flame Wreath Faceless and killing these two health uh, minions that are on the board. Your opponent has to have Power Overwhelming plus something else in order to clear this off. Now, Chucky does happen to have this, but this is a great setup from Shoop, and he has a lot of burn in his hand. He knows that it's only a matter of time. As long as his face, flame your faces connects once, he should feel like he's he's sitting in a great spot. Yeah, well, Chalky about to dump most of the hand here. And that flame wreath will not connect. Yeah, this could, I think, I mean, this this could be bad point. for Shoop, yeah. Get the minions out. Ar Argent Squire. Oh, he's going to save the abusive sergeant. Wants to potentially trade up again. Mm. 
Shoot, picking up anything to draw cards here, I think, was pretty valuable. Yeah. Is eyeing that totem and argent horse rider though. I mean, tar totem argent horse rider is looking pretty good too. You have that flame tongue in hand, so being able to follow up next turn with the card draw, with the full mana pool, I think is really important here. And this will also let him save some of the damage. Uh, it looks like he's just going face, leaving the argent squire alone. Well, this this does make that flame tongue totem most likely four damage next turn. So it'd be six plus the rock biter weapon. He sets it up in a way so if Chucky taps and doesn't find a way to block any of this damage, then Shoop just has lethal with Flame Tongue and Rockbiter. Yep. And at the moment, it looks like Chucky's in the position where he has to tap. Now, we'll see if he has the, the mindset here to kill off the Spell Power Totem, which in an aggressively themed Shaman like this, you I can imagine he would. Not, not for the threat of Flame Tongue, but just for the threat of extra spells. Well, I, I'm looking at this Sea Giant's coming down this turn, and Chucky's trying to think of any reason to not play that. Yeah. Going to face. Wow, Shoop, is that just perfect again? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, not 16. Quite. A couple points 16. off here. So if he can draw into something, he'll have six mana left over. So if he draws a burn spell here, Shoop's going to end this game. Lava Burst is going to do it. Shoop's going to take a 2 0 lead. Wow. In this series. Once again, just setting up the damage and, and getting the burst. Yeah. And Chalky now definitely on the back foot. Yeah, he's in trouble. Yeah, I mean, down two games to zero now. I mean, and this in Zoo is, I would say, ten, tends to be a pretty favored matchup versus Shaman. But Shoop just, despite the the pressure he was under early, the Flame Reef face was coming down and just pulling a lot of resources, and then the Doomhammer playing cleanup for a bit. Getting able to push the damage through. Yeah. Now Shoop has Hunter and Cthulhu Druid left. And when you're up 2-0 in a best of seven, there are you have a pretty significant advantage. If you go up 3-0, in best of five, coming back in a sweep is possible because in a best of five situation in Conquest, sometimes people bring strategies where they counter one deck. Uh, and that, that one deck is the last one remaining, and, and sweeps can happen. But in a best of seven, that strategy sort of goes out the window. Because a lot of times you won't find four decks that can counter a specific deck in this format, in, in the, the Conquest format. Especially since the format ten, tends to uh, lean more towards people just bringing good overall decks instead of an overall strategy. So, um, Shoop in a great spot now. Chalky going to have to overcome this Cthulhu Druid with his new Warlock. And with a hand like that, uh, opening from Shoop. It's going to be tough. Uphill battle. It's definitely a really strong hand. I mean, they both have 